Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. I don't know why I did it like that. Today, we're going to be talking about security, which is something we haven't spoken much about in this channel. So if you're interested in security, which I, I hope you are, then stick around. as I say, we haven't spoken too much about security on this channel. To be honest, it's not my strongest point, but um, hopefully I can I can learn a bit and pass on that information and, and get better myself. But there are certain aspects that I know and I think we should be probably taking a bit more uh, seriously because there are some things we can do that are very, very simple, including what I'm about to talk to you about today. Today's episode right now, that's not very nice, is it? So we're going to be talking about links today and how if you if if links are treated in a certain way that they can actually enable someone to inject code into your website just by you linking off to them. So we, we can put some precautions in place to actually prevent them accessing your website and also performance as well. It can it can help the performance of your website. So it all revolves around the rel attribute. And this is an attribute that you can place on links uh, and various other uh, you know, tags. But in this, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about links specifically. Really, it comes down to when you're linking off to a, a separate page and you're using the underscore target underscore blank, which I'm sure you probably know, but if you don't know, it actually, when you click on a link, it opens up in a new window or a new tab, depending on which uh, setting the, the user actually has on their browser. So we can't actually control whether it's gonna be a new tab or new uh, window. Saying that, with, you know, just a little, a little thing here that, that doesn't really deserve its own episode, but certainly a, a little nugget of information here. We really shouldn't be using underscore blank as a target. The reason for that, and I think maybe this will form the, a larger episode, but really we shouldn't be deciding things for the user, right? The user should be able to decide if they want a link to open a new window or whether they want it to open in the same window. If I'm done with that page and I click on a link to say, go to you know another website or whatever, I want that website to be replaced. I don't want the tab to open up. So what I'll do, I'll hold, I mean, I forget it now, it's so autopilot, but I think it's something like option or command or something like that, I'll option click when I want something to open up in the new window. And really we shouldn't be overtaking uh, the user's intention. That aside, I know a lot of marketing professionals, I know a lot of people don't want you leaving their site. So any external links, they'll want you to open it up, open it up in a separate window. So given that, uh, we're faced with a security issue. And like I say, that security issue enables the, the website that you're linking off to to actually inject and access information and do things on your original page, right? That could be something like um, opening up a, you know, a, a modal of some sort to, te to get you to sign up to something. Um, it could be, you know, because you've obviously put trust in that website that you've linked from, you know. Um, it could be any number of things, you know, the, the point is that there is there is a security flaw, there's a security risk with that um, sort of functionality. So what we can do, we can add a rel attribute on that link that's got the target underscore blank. And that can take sort of three options that we're concerned with today. Um, it can be no opener, no follow, and no referrer. Right, and no follow and no referrer often get confused, and we'll go over those two. So, no referrer means that if you're linking off to a website, that website receives information about what website linked to it. Okay, and then what analytics or Google Analytics typically does, it, it, it tracks that, it, it makes a note of who's linking to you, and it can be very, very useful to know. You know, if if there's a, a random blog article or something like that linking to your website, you can often look at your your link, the pages that are linking to you, and you know, hit them up or or, or give them th or thank you or, or whatever. You can find some interesting things. One thing you might not want to do, and the difference between no follow, you're not giving that website that you're linking to sort of SEO domain authority. So domain authority or domain ranking 
is a system used by analytics and, and Google to know how sort of popular, how um, useful and how in demand, I guess, that website is. Now, if you're linking off to a website that you don't want to give link juice to for, for whatever reason, I'm not actually going to claim to know too much about why you might may or may not want to um, have those things. I think that will be for an SEO expert to answer those questions for you. But what I can tell you, the difference between no referrer and no follow being that no referrer completely blocks the referral um, that you get from the website. No follow is actually you're stopping the domain, um, you're, you're, you're stopping the domain authority that you're giving to that website. So, and you can add these two properties to the rel attribute to, to sort of prevent those two things sort of happen. And, and you can add both if you want. Now, to the, to the issue at hand when it comes to security, it really comes down to the no opener property. And what that's doing, it's sort of preventing the, the website that you're linking to any sort of ability to access your website. And it's as simple as that, really. Um, the benefit of this as well is when you open up a website in a new tab uh, with target underscore blank, that website could be very poorly optimized in terms of the processes, the, the uh, images it's downloading, any kind of performance related um, effect that that website is, is, is doing. It's actually affecting your website as well. Uh, because it's running up on the, it's running on the same thread as your website, which is then in turn slowing down your website. I mean, when that website is finished loading, it's fine, and your website will run whatever. Your website will run as it should, but by adding the no opener thing again, it's preventing that website. It's it's destroying any connection with your website, and it's running on its own thread, and um, it's not able to, like I say, access your website through. Um, you know, however it does. I'm not too sure about the specifics on that. So just to jump into Webflow, we can add a link and adding the rel property is as simple as custom attributes, rel, and then we've got no, no opener, no opener, and then you can add no follow and no ref referrer. Can't spell today. And you can add multiple like that, but of course we're not interested in those. Um, maybe, I mean, you know, maybe we, we would want the no follow there, but we can, do, we can add multiple like that. And once we publish this, and look at our invisible link. You can see that the rel tag has no opener and no follow. Thanks for tuning into this episode. I just wanted to announce before you go that I have released a podcast called That Tech Show and it's hosted by myself and Chris Adams. And we talk about all things tech with actually those that make it happen, so industry professionals. We have people from Amazon, we have CTOs, we have um, you know, for, for you guys, we have Joe Krug on from FinSuite on the show. Uh, the episode isn't quite released yet as of the date now, but it will be getting released soon. Um, so we, we talk all things tech. We talk the news. Um, it's, it's a sort of jam-packed podcast that I hope that everyone in, in the tech industry can enjoy. So if you're interested in that, head on over to thattech.show, our website, um, and or, or Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, uh, give us a subscribe. If on Apple, if you're on Apple Podcasts, give us a give us a five star review because that really helps you know promote the channel and all the rest of it. And I hope to be bringing you more Webflow content on that channel as well, a uh, bit more in depth, a bit more kind of you know discussion related. And um, yeah. So I hope you found that useful. We're starting to dip into the world of security here, which is a big factor of websites. Uh, if you found this useful, please do let me know. If, you, if you're interested more in the, um, the security side of your website, do let me know if there's any specific concerns, uh, because then I can look into that and, and specifically give, give, uh, make, a, make an episode specifically on that topic. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of release these as they come into my mind. Um, 
I think that's it. And until next time, happy no coding. <laughs>